I've made several videos and shorts in the past about the RK750 and how it performs. That card, while it is great when it comes to overall value for your money, actually features a cutdown graphics core and a more restrictive power limit. Enter the A770, the fully unlocked bigger brother to the A750, and while things have improved a lot over the past year since launch, I think that this card provides a lot of unique characteristics that make one of these cards worth considering, especially now that they're going on sale into the holiday season. Before we get into this video, I'd like to say not to forget to hit the like button and subscribe, so you'll be notified about all their future uploads. Additionally, don't forget to leave a comment, especially if there's something I missed. I can't cover every aspect of a card in the relatively short duration of a video, but I more so wanted to discuss some of my experience with the A770 in the time I've had it, and also discuss some preliminary comparisons with the weaker and way cheaper A750. Without any further ado, let's dive into my initial impressions of the A770 and see what it offers over its cheaper siblings. Taking the A770 out of the box, this is the Sparkle Titan OC Edition, which sports a 2.5 slot triple fan heatsink that's more than capable of dissipating the 290 watts this card is rated to draw. Right off the bat, a lot of you may be thinking to yourself that this is in 3070 or 3070 Ti territory when it comes to total board power, and on paper it's pretty similar. When it comes to the dimensions and requirements of the card from your system, it's also pretty similar to the 3070 or 3060 Ti from NVIDIA or the 6800 or 6700 XT from AMD. In fact, this card actually came with hardware to hold the card up to keep it from sagging, which is either funny because I wasn't expecting it or comforting because it means the heatsink is beefy and kind of overkill for dissipating the power being drawn. Temperatures on the die and memory are also way better on this flavor of the A770 than the limited edition A750 which is to be expected because the heatsink is so much larger. I mean, we're talking never exceeding 70 Celsius no matter what I throw at the card overclocking wise, and even under sustained load, the cards stick to the mid to high 60s and never got audible. A majority of the time when idling, the fans also turn off, which helps to cut down on noise. The die featured is similar in transistor count and overall area to GA104, and also features a memory subsystem that's reminiscent of the base 3070. The big difference between this card and the 3070, though, is the capacity and clock speeds. With 16GB of 17.5GB per second GDDR6, you get nearly twice the capacity and 3.5 extra giga transfers per second with the Intel card. The A750 already had a strong memory system, and the A770 builds on it with just faster modules. This isn't GDDR6X, so it's just standard NRZ, which means it doesn't run as hot under load, but is also less efficient in terms of bits per clock. With just under 560 gigabytes per second of total bandwidth to the cores, this speeds out the 3070 by over 100 gigabytes per second, but is slightly behind the 3070 Ti which comes in at slightly over 600 gigabytes per second thanks to its use of GDDR6X. It's not something to really complain about, but what it means is that the GPU on board has more raw bandwidth available to it than the A750 and RTX 3070. This will help to saturate the GPU cores inside the card with data and keep them fed with instructions. Doubling the capacity over the A750 to 16GB also helps make this card a much more attractive option if you're looking to actually use that much memory. In games that don't make use of the extra memory, the jump in bandwidth alone should help, but if you're VRAM limited before, you can now turn up textures to the highest settings and not have to worry about your card having to constantly stream assets from the CPU. This memory pool can also come in handy when it comes to AI workloads and the fact that the GPU features Intel's XMX cores means that it supports matrix operations and load stores and hardware. This can accelerate the speed of low bit depth integer processing and helps to reduce the memory footprint of highly complex algorithms and data sets. Unless you're writing the code in your applications yourself, the software will need to utilize this inbuilt hardware with specialized software. But from what I've experienced over the past year, developers are gradually accepting this new hardware and are shipping products that can now utilize Intel's AI features. For the software that I use, really only DaVinci Resolve, Handbrake, and Blender, renders are fully GPU accelerated and can be output in the AV1 codec. DaVinci Resolve also has options to enable the neural engine optimizations on Intel hardware. So whatever is going on behind the scenes, quite a few large companies are now incorporating code that incorporates Intel accelerators. You get the same features with the A380, A580, and A750 as well. 
So if you're looking for something a little cheaper than the A770, there are quite a few options that can range from a decent media streaming device all the way up to a professional workstation. With a fully unlocked Alchemist-based DG2512 GPU die, the A770 only has about 14% additional shader cores, texture mapping units, and rasterization operation pipelines over the A750, which already had a ridiculous pixel and texture fill rate of just under 269 gigapixels and over 537 gigatexels per second respectively. The A770 tops this with over 307 gigapixels and 614 gigatexels per second, a fill rate across 128 ROPs and 256 texture mapping units. That's right, this card actually has more rasterization operation pipelines than the 3090 Ti. Now does that mean this card can beat a 3090 class card? Well, no. But this is more illustrating the fact that Intel way overbuilt these cards for their target performance level. I'm not complaining at all about the overbuilt nature of the Alchemist cards, I'm more so just pointing out that this fancy front end is capable of a lot of simultaneous rendering operations in ways that are traditionally reserved for ultra enthusiast grade cards. In fact, this card is found in a lot of data centers in an almost identical configuration. The Intel Flex 170 is this card's enterprise class contemporary, only with sustained core clocks reduced for efficiency's sake and to reduce the power envelope. With identical specs and support as its enterprise counterpart, it's becoming more evident that the A770, and to a larger degree, almost all the Alchemist GPUs in the generation 12.7 family, seem to be a compute throughput focused architecture. If you want a design that has similar issues and advantages to Alchemist, you can actually look at AMD's Vega, which kind of makes sense as both projects were headed by Raja Kadori. Both these microarchitectures scale pretty well when code is being written to parallelize across all the FPUs in the core. OpenCL scores, which essentially measure the amount of information able to be processed per unit of time, have similar implications between both Vega and Alchemist. Both these generations are technically superior to their contemporaries when it comes to raw teraflop count and overall square footage and transistor count. However, they both seem to fall behind when it comes to overall sub-core occupancy of operations and data. For the Intel GPU, this is less profound thanks to an overall shrinking of SIMD width in the individual cores, and thus introducing more of these smaller structures that are able to take in and process data. This still doesn't seem to be a perfect solution, as this card just isn't performing like you'd expect a 20 teraflop card to, but also keep in mind that teraflops can't necessarily be directly compared between microarchitectures, especially when they come from different teams. However, if your card has four times the amount of raw circuitry dedicated to computing numbers than a competing design, and you're getting creamed by said design, then I think that most people would consider that to be a design issue to be corrected. I'm not saying that the A770 performs poorly, but considering the tech that's in the card, it's kind of puzzling why it's not performing more closely to a 3070 or 3070 Ti. Overall though, is the A770 worth checking out if you're looking for a new GPU to power your desktop computer? Well, if you're a more experienced user when it comes to troubleshooting issues, then this, or any of the Intel cards really, would be an interesting investment if you're okay with not getting the best-in-class performance or efficiency. From the get-go, this card offers more advanced AI and RT than what AMD offers, basically matching NVIDIA in terms of throughput for these specialized data types. This may be useful if the applications you're using take advantage of this hardware, but if not, then it just won't be used. Out of the three main players in the discrete GPU market, Intel and NVIDIA offer the most feature-rich graphics solutions when it comes to general purpose and specialized compute. NVIDIA offers the best from a technical perspective, but the fact that Intel has it shows that it's going to be a part of graphics hardware moving forward, and I'd be surprised if AMD doesn't adopt similar technology in the next generation or two. The 16GB memory buffer on this card is also complete overkill for the resolutions it's capable of. From the small suite of tests run on the card, 1080 and 1440p are definitely its sweet spot, though it can definitely run 4K titles in quite a few instances. For the most competitive performance, you're probably going to be lowering settings anyways, so the 16 gigs of memory won't really make a difference. But if you do productivity work, then this can help to prevent streaming data between the CPU and GPU, and can also store larger datasets without choking the card. For this tier of hardware, you don't really need 16 gigs, but it's definitely a nice to have when it comes to future proofing yourself for high resolution texture work. It's sort of like the 4060 Ti 16GB where it's nice to have, but it ultimately doesn't seem to be worth the additional 50% of your money. However, if you're going to buy one of these cards, it's definitely a nice inclusion. The overall build quality of this card is also very high. 
And the fact that it's been on sale for the past week or so for $289, it's honestly hard to pass up given it's a modern GPU architecture running modern GDDR6. In order to find a card with similar speeds and capacities, you need to spend over $100 more on the RX 6800. Granted, that card performs significantly better than the A770, but at the end of the day, Intel is offering a 16GB modern GPU for under $300 if you know where to look. Its performance is competitive with similarly priced new cars from NVIDIA, though I will say that the RX 6700 XT makes a very compelling argument for about $15 more. For what I personally use GPUs for, this card accelerates 3D rendering and GPU programs excellently, and provides an awesome piece of hardware with a strong software suite to back it up. It's worth looking into if you've got experience with troubleshooting systems, and you're more comfortable with doing something like going into the BIOS or physically swapping out hardware. However, if you want a strictly plug-and-play experience without any of the additional tinkering or potential headaches, then the RTX 3060 Ti or RX 6700 XT would be better options if you just want a GPU to work. So, thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. Let me know what you guys think about the A770. Would you consider one? Maybe not as your main GPU, but just to tinker with. I've been running an Arc GPU as my main card for a few months now, and I've got to say that I'm happy with where it's heading. That's all I really have to say on the matter. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.